Travel rocks. I'm Rock Earl. I travel. And these are my stories. Well, it's about time we got to this. We're going to talk about the trip to China. Finally. Okay, and we got a lot of stuff to cover, so we're going to move pretty quickly. The first place we came to was Shanghai. And what everybody thinks about when they think of Shanghai is they think of uh, the mystic and, and, and the old marines that were there back in the early 1900s. Pearl of the Pacific. Yes. And uh, one of the first places that they took us to was the... What, what, uh, the 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 Pudong, the Pudong. is that what it is? Yeah, the Pudong is the new section of Shanghai, and it's the section you see on TV with all the wild skyscrapers and the crazy buildings and all the new stuff. It's just the most dynamic spot. Now, about uh, less than ten years ago, that was a swamp. Am I correct? Yeah, absolutely. The whole area is, is well, not the whole area. There, there were some old apartments and some old development over there, but it was mostly a swamp, and they've built it up as the new expansion area for the financial district of town. And it's absolutely beautiful. And the hotels over there are absolutely wonderful. And I know I use that word a lot today, but uh, I've got to tell you, that was that was the best hotel we stayed at the whole trip. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I wanted to make the point about the five-star hotels in China are currently the best five-star experience in the world you can do. We were at the St. Regis in Shanghai, which is as much luxury as you can stand practically, and uh, the Western, uh, the U.S. dollar rate would be in the mid-200s for that. I mean, sure. the $500 hotel in Europe or anywhere else in the world is in the mid-twos, maybe even 300. It's, it's an unbelievable value. And it was the food. Oh, because well, okay, we'll get we'll get that later, but. Um, they, they took us, and we should say we were on a tour. We were. And you organized this tour. Yes. All right. And we did it through uh, Steve. <laughs> Steve was our Chinese guide for the Viking River Tour. He was absolutely wonderful. But, and, and I would suggest, I don't know about you, you do more traveling than me, but that was my first trip to China, and I would say if you're going for the first time, you should go on a tour. Oh, I agree, especially in a place like that. Um, in this case, Vikings one of the best operators in the world, and they had everything nailed. Um, oh, yes. I, I had one small complaint with them, and we'll talk about that when we get to Beijing, the, the Beijing Opera, the Peking Opera that we yeah. went to, but we'll get to that when we get to Beijing. Otherwise, okay. it was a, a pretty flawless, seamless experience for, for a bunch of Americans. Okay, now, you before, before we arrived, you came a few days early, and you hired a driver. I did that, and I lived as a local, really, um, and that, that's, a, that's a real story, too. Uh, I arrived in Shanghai about a week early. I had been, been in Korea for a couple of weeks at some meetings, and so I, I showed up in Shanghai, and I actually stayed with some, some locals there. They were some friends of mine from a previous home exchange, and they owed me some time. Mm -hmm. This guy, is, uh, he and his wife both were, are bo were born in Hong Kong, but they're U.S. citizens. He's a Ph.D. in chemistry, and he's running uh, the Chinese operations of a big Canadian firm right now. So why are you talking about this you have a picture out of his window yes absolutely I'm getting to that yeah. they they had an apartment paid for by the company on the 35th floor one of the best buildings in the best parts of Pudong which is the best part of Shanghai sure the views are unbelievable 4,000 square feet marble floors I would live in made cook anything you wanted and I had the opportunity of living there for a week and following them around and doing things there I mean as, as a local it was just really neat and, and if you got a shot of the uh, communications tower Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, because you need to show that as well. And that was uh, the, uh, I don't want to say the communist regime, but, but the government decided that all communications would go through that tower. Radio, television, everything goes through that tower. And it's, it's architecturally, it's, uh, and I don't remember, was, was it a, a Chinese architect that designed that? I don't know. Well, it was kind of neat. And then the tunnels under the river? Yeah. Well, uh, we should cover what is this, the the bund. Is that what it is? The bund. The bund is is the name for the the, the harbor. There is really on a river. It's not on the ocean. It's on a river. And on the non Pudong side, the old Shanghai side, uh, there's an esplanade along the river that it really made into a beautiful tourist area. And it comes from the 18th and 19th century colonial concession the French had a concession and the British and the Germans and everything they would build their style buildings along the river right and there. They're the there and they're still there and they're still there and they're wonderful it's just a little slice of the west in the middle of Shanghai and so yes on the on the Viking uh, tour we, we got a chance to go down there and stand around and look and we'll, we'll show you pictures on the screen now it's just a neat spot and the interesting thing about the bun is that's where in, in, in Shanghai that's where the teenagers go 
that's if if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, that's where you go and you walk along the bun, and it's、uh, it's interesting. You are just immediately hit by just thousands of ads, one way or another, on the buildings. They have ships that are coming down the river that have the huge. Giant TV screen. You'll、on. see that now. That was unbelievable. A ship goes sailing by with a giant screen flashing advertisements at you. And that one building, and, and I, 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 I think it was the German legation or whatever that kind of tilted a little. Yes,、bit. one of the old colonial buildings is is tilted a bit. And it was just, just so much fun.、Um, what did you like best about Shanghai? And it is. It's pronounced. We learned everything. It's pronounced Shanghai, not Shanghai. Yeah, I guess I like the juxtaposition of the, all the insanely new stuff—the the world-class buildings and towers and architecture right across the river from this ancient city, and, and how they deal with that. And this is a city of what, 20 million or 18 million, which is not a big city in China. It's just an average, everyday city. I just thought the way they've merged the new with the old and all this stuff is neat. Now, I'm just the other side. I, I enjoyed the old, the, the, like when we went to the the Emperor's Garden. Is that what it was? Was that in Was that in Shanghai? Yes, the big garden we went to. There was、yes. right in the middle of the city. I mean, it was something that was built, and the age of everything. Two、um, hundred years to us is old. We consider them antiques, true antiques. If you watch Antiques Roadshow, the chair that was made in the 1700s. Well, that's modern history in China, and we were looking at things from like 1400, and, and that's still modern history. And way, be, way before that. I mean, thousands of years. Oh yeah, and and so it was whirlwind. I will say that, but we we did stop at all the places that we needed to do. Now, while you were there, you did some interesting things. Number one, you wouldn't think of this. You got a haircut. I did.、Indeed. Tell me about the haircut. Let's get to that when we come back. There's a bunch of things I did as a local, including a haircut, massage, a bunch of other street food. It was really neat when and, we get back. And the noodles. So stay tuned.